what would you say are the key features of Excel that an entry-level analyst should know? Wow. Um, okay, so first you need to you need to know how you can get data into Excel uh, from uh, you know the ability to connect to data, whether that data is on the web or that data is in a database. Excel allows you to create those connections, and you're you might as well learn how to do it in Excel. Uh, you know, you're going to do it a little differently when you're using something like Tableau or Power BI, but just to be able to connect to data sources in Excel is a, is of, of itself important if you want to work with, you know, corporate data. The next skill I think is, is important are all of the skills that have to do with formatting as a table. And I don't particularly like that Microsoft called it format, but it really is taking a, a data set and saying, you know, this is my database. Here are my, my fields. They're in columns. Here are my records. They're in rows. And then using the tools that are packaged along with that, and that is going to pour you right into pivot tables so that you have the ability to do easily in Excel uh, what's something that's really hard to do in a database. And in most databases, that's a cross-tab analysis. And, and they're not necessarily easy conceptually, but when you do them in Excel, pivot tables, they make sense, then you can take those skills. If you needed, for example, to work directly in, in with a database and say, okay, I under, if you conceptually understand pivot tables, you're gonna conceptually understand cross-tab analysis. So it's a much, a, a much kinder entry point. Can you define cr cross-tab analysis? Okay, so uh, a cross-tab analysis is being able to take uh, information, transactional information that you have in rows, mm -hmm. okay, records of data. So let's imagine, um, let's imagine that we have customer information, okay? We have the date that they last purchased something. We have their demographics, their name, their address, city, state, zip code, um, and perhaps we have... Uh, their date of birth for whatever bizarre reason. Let's say we have those things. And so we want to be able to ask questions about that data, like, um, is there any kind of a link between where someone lives and how old they are? Or is there any kind of a link between where someone lives and the last time they purchased from us? And perhaps we even know when they purchased, do they purchase on site or online? So is there a link between age and online ordering? So all of those kinds of questions where we're taking in a table one column of data and comparing it to the values in another in a way that actually ties those things together. Because it's not as if we're just going to take a column of birth dates and a column of purchasing behavior separately. We actually want those tied together. And that's the cross in the cross tab, I think, is the, is the fact that we know that we're talking about a record where an individual made a purchase and they made it online and that person has an age because they have a birth date. So if you take all of that information, then we can create a table that says, based by age in years or in decades, this is the pattern of people shopping in person or online, for example. So a cross-tab analysis is the ability to take information in a table, record-based information, and extract out of that meaningful answers to questions. Yeah. Um, you know, with, and that's what a pivot table is too. It's exactly the same thing. It's just that, that with a pivot table, it's so easy in Excel. Excel makes this abundantly easy to simply, if I wanted to do that in Excel, I could have created pivot tables to answer all of those questions that I kind of pitched out in the mm -hmm. time that we've talked about it. So, so starting with Excel, starting with how we get data into Excel, um, how we use the database functions, how we craft pivot tables, and then depending on, and, and how you create charts. Charts are just a good thing in Excel um, to be able to visualize data. There, you know, when you're talking about your CFO who really wants to see numbers, um, if he wants to see charts, he or, you know, if a CFO wants to see charts, they also don't want those three-dimensional charts because they exaggerate some things to make them look three-dimensional. The data points on a right. 3D pie are overstated because they're closer to you and they're bigger. And uh, w one of the CFOs that I used to work with would rant about any chart that was three-dimensional at all. He'd go, flatten it out. If you're going to give me a picture, flatten it out. <laughs> well, because first of that's all, at least what makes pie feel, charts right? are, are sacrilegious in the data visualization space. 
<laughs> oh, no kidding. No kidding. <laughs> There's so exactly. many articles and videos about why a pie chart is a terrible way to represent data because our, our eyes don't correct information that way. You know, you want a standardized axis and then you can see like a bar chart, you can see differences between links. We, our eyes can't process, oh, that's a 43 degree angle and that's a 56 degree angle. You know, this is the one. I mean, you can kind of see that it's, you know, it's taken up more space, but, you know, um, pie charts are, are not, but I mean, that gets into actually what we were talking about um, with that, you know, potential data boot camp is I think we should start with an Excel course that kind of primes you on thinking like an analyst. So a cross tab, essentially what you're doing is you're finding insights within the data. So you need that foundation. Correct. But then once you've found that in, in insight, you need to be able to tell that story. And I think that there should be maybe, a, I don't know if it should be a full course or should it be like the intro section of a data visualization course where you learn the hard skills, but there's an art of presenting data. And that's, that's yes. kind of an art and it's a, you know, it's a craft. It's you're, you're, and I, I mean, that's what kind of drew me to it is that it's, it's creative. It's both mm. analytical and creative. And I, I love that combination. So that kind of sums up my personality. You know, I, I do have an eye for aesthetic, mm. but I yeah. also really like thinking analytically. And, and I'm, I'm wondering if that is something, I wonder if, you know, if that's a nature nurture thing. I wonder, you know, how did I develop that? Because it seems like I, I somewhat intuited that analytical thinking ability well before I took any analytics classes. Mm. Well, I, I think there's, I think there are, I don't want to say, I might say personality types, but that might be wrong. Um, I think that there, but I, but I think that for everybody who ends up in data analytics, at some point they, they feel like there was a natural path that got them there. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that things that they had done previously in their life got them to the point that data analytics was the thing that made sense. Um, I see the same thing for, from folks who do um, CGI work, computer graphics work. It's like they can tell you all the little steps of things that they learned that drew them in that direction. So I think there's a, I think there's a quality of, um, a quality of thought and a quality of patience, uh, as well as, as just a desire that when you start creating really great analytics, when you start creating, you know, the first truly beautiful visualization you do that you go, wow, did I do that? Mm. You, you're either hooked at that point or you're not, you know? Um, so I, I think it is, you know, when you said, you, you know, that it's both the creative side and, and the more quantitative side, and I agree with that. And then you said, and then you, you have, you know, that you're a good designer for me. If I need great design, I rent it out anymore because we get, that's the part that I'm least good at. I'm really great at presenting. I'm really great at analyzing data. I'm really great at deciding what the story should be. What's the best story from this data? Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, and maybe it's because I need to invest more time in it. I'm, I'm not sure. But, but I know other people create things that are more beautiful than I create given, this, hmm. given the same data. Um, and I just have always kind of figured that was a, a little missing piece of me that, and I'll look at it and I'll go, that could be more beautiful. I need to call, a, call a friend. Where's my lifeline? 